Hey guys, it's Jeff. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to talk about how I care and propagate the Cebu Blue Pothos or the Epipenum Panatum. I currently have a number of cuttings rooting in perlite right now, so I'm going to be taking those out of the prop box, putting it in some soil, and I'll be adding a uh, moss pole, burlap pole, just so it gives a chance for these guys to latch onto and uh, tr I guess grow upwards, and that way it can get a bit more of a mature leaf. So I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Uh, so yeah, let's get into it. I got this plant about two years ago as part of a plant trade. I got three small little cuttings and I chopped them up, uh, rooted them in water, and I have since made a number of pots, uh, this one being the largest. Uh, this is a more recent one. And um, I've actually sold some and given some cuttings away as well. So it's actually grown really, really fast for me over the last couple of years. I did have one plant that was in my kitchen last year that actually got thrips. This is the remaining batch and it is trailing like crazy. I've cut a couple strands back already. I've placed those in the uh, perlite prop box. So we'll take a look at those as well. But I guess I'm gonna start off uh, with light for these guys. They tend to like that medium light. And again, what does that mean? Right now, I currently have mine. It's uh, near a south facing window. It's uh, on a west wall on the plant shelf. It does get some morning direct sunlight. Um, I would not recommend any other type of sunlight like throughout the uh, kind of the middle of the day or later in the day as it's a little bit more intense. But right now you can see there's no um, leaf burn or anything like that. It does really, really well. These can also tolerate lower light conditions, but they obviously grow much faster when they are in a brighter location. It's kind of the misconception, I guess, about pothos and these types of plants or epipenums in general is they can tolerate low light. They don't grow very fast, but they do really well in brighter light locations. I I currently have a uh, Hawaiian golden pothos in direct sunlight. It's sitting on my south facing window getting full sun for I would say the better part of three quarters of the day um, and it's doing really really well. It's getting lots of irrigation um, on, the, uh, on the leaves. I bought a digital light meter off Amazon a couple months ago just to help me uh, place my plants in the correct position. So it has a little sensor that um, basically you place where the plant is and uh, face it towards your light source. So right now this is obviously a grow light and you can see that it is getting about uh, 240 foot candles. That's what the FC stands for right there. That's the uh, light measurement that I use. So for low light plants, it's usually around the 50 to 250 foot candles. Medium is uh, about 250 to 500 foot candles. And anything higher than 500 foot candles, I classify as high light. So this would be a perfect location for this plant. This is a medium light location. You can see how far back it is from the grow light. So this would be a perfect spot for that. So the next thing I wanna talk about is watering and I wanna compare these two plants. This one you can see still looks really healthy. Nothing's drooping or anything like that. It is absolutely bone dry. So it's definitely gonna need some water, but I just wanted to compare it to this one. You can see how the leaves are just slightly uh, drooping. They're a little bit saggy. This one is in definite need of water. Um, I've been finding uh, this one's been extra thirsty lately, so it may need to be repotted soon, but that's a good sign. Um, just to check the roots and the pot, if you're constantly watering your plant like more than you normally should, um, it probably needs to be uh, upsized or repotted into something a little bit larger as it's uh, probably root bound right now. So that's just something that I wanted to show quickly. Looks really healthy, looks, uh, looks perky. Uh, this one looks uh, pretty sad and droopy. So I'm gonna be watering both of these today. Um, but I'm also gonna be adding some uh, fertilizer in. So it is coming up into the winter months here. So um, just follow the directions. This is what I use right now. Just follow the directions on the back of the packaging. I'm going to be cutting this uh, dosage in half. Um, so yeah, I've already added some to this uh, watering can. Um, it is a liquid fertilizer. And then I'm gonna add some water in here and then just water like you normally would. Just fill it up. This is filtered tap water. I have a little, um, I guess canister that uh, attaches to our uh, tap. 
I'll show the soil that I use when I pot up the uh, uh, propagated cuttings here shortly, but you want to use a well-draining soil. So this is a tropical plant soil, and I add a bunch of extra perlite for drainage. Uh, pothos, or these epipranums, they like a good thorough watering, but they don't like to sit in wet, soggy soil for very long. So just make sure that you use a well-draining soil. You can also use uh, terracotta as a, a, just another added measure to, um, I guess, dry out the soil a bit faster. Uh, terracotta is very good at, it's very porous, so it's good at uh, absorbing soil moisture, lowering the pot, and then evaporating it out. So I have the fertilizer in the watering can, and I just no water like I normally would. So I'm going to, whoops, soak the soil until it comes out the bottom of the drain hole. You see there's roots poking out the bottom already. I can still feel that the soil is dry, like when you squeeze the container, you can feel some crunchy soil. So I'm just gonna give it a little bit more water here, let that drain through, and then we'll do the, whoa, just dumped a bunch of soil out. And I'm gonna do the same thing with this big one. The pot is super light. The soil is absolutely bone dry, so I know this definitely needs to be watered. I'm gonna give this one a lot of water. So I'm gonna let that soak through. Just gonna show you how fast this water drains through. Looks like I actually have some orchid bark in this one. So that's what you want to see is just that uh, water draining right through and not sitting at the top. Give it a few more soaks until it comes out the bottom of the drain hole. You can already start to feel the uh, pot is a little bit heavier. That's a good way to tell if the plant, if you're unsure if it needs to be watered, just uh, pick up the pot. If it's light, probably needs some water, just feel the soil. So I'm gonna give it, like I said, a really good watering. So the reason why I'm fertilizing right now is both of these plants are still actively growing. You can see there's some uh, new leaves popping out through the end. So I wanna make sure that it has enough nutrients to, uh, I guess, provide that um, current growth. So that's why I'm fertilizing right now, just at half the dose, because it might be a little bit slower than uh, say if it was growing in the summer. Oh yeah, that should be good. So propagating this plant is extremely easy and I'll show you some examples here in a second, but basically you wanna find a section of the stem like this and you can do one of two ways. You can take a stem cutting, so you can leave this entire section intact, root the end of it in either water, uh, perlite or sphagnum, and then place it in an existing pot or make uh, an entirely new pot. Or you can take individual leaf cuttings. So that means you wanna look for a uh, leaf node. So the leaf node is obviously an area where a leaf is attached and it's got a, a little line on the uh, stem there and then it'll also have these little bumps that's aerial roots so that's where the roots are going to grow so i would cut uh, something close to these leaf nodes just uh, i guess leaving the section of the stem um, out it's not going to grow any roots from here so you can cut in between two leaf nodes and just go all the way up the stem uh, for however many cuttings you want. And the reason why I like taking uh, individual leaf cuttings is that when you place them in a pot like this, it, uh, it basically makes a nice full pot. Each individual leaf cutting will grow into its own stem or its own new stem or vine. So these are all individual leaf cuttings just placed in, in this uh, one pot and they will all, you can see they're starting to uh, get some new growth right there and they'll all start to push out their own new vines uh, similar to this one here. So that's how you make a nice full pot of pothos with uh, individual leaf cuttings. So here's my propagation box and I have many videos on how to set it up, uh, some of the uh, plants that I have in it, but I placed all these individual Cebu Blue pothos cuttings in maybe two weeks ago and it's got, come on focus, it's got maybe some smaller roots right now. I probably should leave it in here a little bit longer, but I'm gonna take my chances and pot them all up in an individual pot. Okay, so here's a bigger root. This is what uh, you should be uh, looking for when potting them up into some soil. I'm just gonna remove them all. Uh, this one has no roots, but it does have a new little growth point. Okay, I'm gonna set that one aside for a second. This one, the leaf is yellow. Okay, so maybe it's not the best time. <laughs> okay, so here's another nicely rooted one. So, okay, I'm just gonna pull a few of these out. There's another nice root. A few cuttings, oh, here's some more. Oh yeah, definitely I have enough for a nice pot. Got another one back here too. 
Got a few. Okay, so that should be enough. I think that's it. Oh, there's one more. Tiny little root. I'm gonna stick it in there anyways, see what happens. I'm gonna put them all in. So I'm just making my little mini burlap pole. Um, these are just little bamboo skewers. I got some burlap I just cut up to size. Taped it down, I'm just gonna roll it up and then I'll tie it up. So here's the finished product and I think it looks uh, pretty darn good. It looks like a corn dog on a stick. Um, it's nothing pretty, but it'll definitely do the trick. So I'm gonna place it in the uh, pot, just in the middle like this. Gonna fill some soil around and, and then we'll add the cuttings. So this is the soil that I use. This is a, a, a tropical plant soil and it's got some uh, big chunky perlite. So I'm just gonna mix that in. Uh, there is a little bit of orchid bark at the bottom here as well from uh, another, I guess, plant mixture. So this is basically the consistency that I like to use for uh, this type of plant. And I'm just going to fill the uh, majority of the pot up just because the cuttings are so small. Just something like that. Pack it down a little bit. And I'm going to add the moss pole in. Just make a little spot like that. Place this in the middle. Pack that down. Okay, so I might have to trim this stick down a little bit. Actually, yeah, I'm just gonna break it. Just break a small little piece off. I have had some other people say not to use a wood stick and I agree with them just because eventually over time this will rot, but I'm not too worried about that right now. I'm just gonna do a temporary one because I will have to probably upsize this pot and really I don't have any other material on hand. So I'm just gonna place them like this. Um, it's not as difficult, I guess, for these cuttings to transition when it's in perlite compared to water. When you have water propagated cuttings, the, you do not want them to dry out at all, otherwise your cuttings will die very fast. So you know, if you propagate them by water, you wanna make sure that you um, keep the soil wet for about two weeks and then just slowly cut back on the watering. Once you add soil in, you can also adjust the cuttings a little bit better as well, but I'm just roughly placing them all around the pot just so that they can all grow upwards and attach to the moss bolt. As I made mention earlier in the video, if you want a mature Cebu Blue uh, leaf, you wanna make sure that you let it grow upwards instead of uh, like a viney type plant. It will only mature when it grows upwards. So that's why I'm putting it on a moss pole today, just to allow it to grow upwards. And I want, whoops, I want those mature leaves, which eventually they get uh, fenestrations or slits on the leaves as they get larger and more mature. Okay, so now I have them kind of arranged around the pot. I'm just going to just add soil around and then add water and that's pretty much it. Just gonna use my spray bottle here just to lightly coat the top of the soil here first. So now I'm just gonna give it some water. There's no fertilizer in here. I used it up on the other plants. Just wanna make sure that it is just straight filtered water. Just check the package as most commercial soils will have uh, nutrients for up to three months. So you wanna give like a double dose of fertilizer, otherwise you'll probably burn the roots. You're just gonna let that soak through and uh, this project is done. So I think that's gonna be pretty much it for this video. If you have any comments or questions, please leave it down below in the comment section. If you're new here, please consider subscribing for more houseplant content. Otherwise, thanks again for watching all my videos. Uh, take care everyone, bye.